Do you know the situation where you're trying to get some kind of work done and all of a sudden a thought pops up into your head where you think about something that you still need to get done today, like calling your mom or paypaling your friend the money from the other nights, and then you're trying to circle back into your task and think, okay, I'll just do it later. And a few hours pass by and you are catching yourself again thinking of the same things. Sometimes even a day passes by and again you're catching yourself thinking about the things that you still need to do because you didn't get them done yet. I know I have felt like this multiple times and I still of course do sometimes but I have read one book it's called Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. And David has invented the getting things done method and has shown millions of people how to transform an overwhelming and overcommitted life into one that feels more relaxed, balanced, with more successful outcomes. David has also been recognized by Forbes as one of the top five executive coaches in the US. And Fast Company magazine called David one of the world's most influential thinkers in the area of personal productivity. So for today I have invited David to walk us through the five steps of getting things done for you to step up your productivity game in your 20s and feel less stressed along the way. I will also show some of the examples that I use to implement this method on a daily and weekly basis. So the first step is to develop what David is calling a capturing habit. Your head is just such a crappy office and so the cognitive science has basically proven that. The number of things you could actually keep in your head, you know, that you think you would, could, should, might need to decide or do something or think about is four. As soon as you have five, you won't take a test as well. You won't be as present cooking spaghetti as well. You're going to be suboptimal cognitively. Now, I discovered that 40 years ago, where your head's for having ideas, but not for hanging on to them. So that's the first step is to grab it, get it out of your head, however you want to do it. So this means that you have some place, can be a paper, can be your phone, can be really anything where you write everything down that pops up into your head, can be big or small, professional or personal related. So I do this in Notion where I have all my daily and weekly to-dos planned. So every time something comes to my mind, an idea or a task I need to get done, I will put it in my Notion. I will even do this when I'm lying in my bed and I have something coming up in my mind, I'll just pull out my phone again and write it down. The next step is the clarifying step. Which most people don't do about their to-do list. Their to-do list are sort of a, you know, an incomplete list of unclear stuff. That if you, most people looking at their to-do list create as much stress as the, as the list might have relieved initially to begin with because they're looking at things that they still haven't finished thinking about or deciding about what to do about it. So now that you have this item that you either still need to get done or this idea of something, you need to look at it again and ask yourself, okay, now what the hell am I going to do with that? Is that something I actually want to do something about? Yes or no? Might be just a strange idea. Yeah, it's a crum crummy idea. So what? Dump it. It could be, hmm, that's a cool idea. I might want to put in a book or a blog someday. So then you store it as reference. For the reference part, I have different pages in Notion. So for example, I have one in my Notion for business ideas. So I just pop in anything that comes to my mind that I find interesting, like a problem I find interesting that could be potentially solved through a business. And I also have one where I put down interesting thoughts or realizations I had through the day. So I just don't forget about them. And this is really something that you can adapt based on your own needs of course. Some people also have pages where they store interesting articles they've seen to just remember them and read them later when they actually have time. Or it could be, oh no, there is something I need to do about that. What? What's the action step you would need to take to complete that? And if one action step won't finish it, what's the project that you're committed to finish? And David also suggests if it's a task that you can get done under two minutes, you should get it done right away. So by doing this, you are already very clear on what you need to do next. So you will feel less overwhelmed. Step number three, organize. Now what do I need to do? Oh, you know, I need to call my sister about this thing. Great. If you can't call her that minute, where are you going to park a reminder of that? So that's the organized step. 
if you've got stuff that you know you need to do or be reminded of at some point or be able to see as reference at some point, you better than park it where those things go. So you need to capture the stuff, then you need to clarify what it means, then you need to organize the results of that in some sort of trusted external brain. So when you go out for errands, you see all, a list of all the errands you've ever come up with that you need to do. Or all the books that you need to read for school or all the papers you need to finish for school. You need to be able to see that. So the idea is that if... There's something I want to have different about that and I know what I need to do next. And I've got a reminder of that in an appropriate place. I'll see it at the right time. Step four is to review your list. And at some point you need to pull up the rear guard and you need to hold the world back and catch up. You know, what new projects have shown up that you haven't captured yet? What conversations have you had? What meetings have you been in that you said, oh yeah, I will, or, or they said they will, and you need to, and you haven't tracked that and you need to then catch up. Have you looked at your last two weeks and caught all the things on your calendar that went, oh God, that reminds me I should. Or look for the next two or three or four weeks or four months and say, oh God, that reminds me I need to, I should get tickets now while they're still cheap. A trusted system is not just the tools you have, but the behaviors you have about your tools. So you don't trust your phone unless you know you're going to empty wherever you dump that stuff within the next 24 to 48 hours. This is something I do in two ways. First of all, I review my list daily. So whenever I'm done with my working day, I'll go through the list of things I captured throughout the day. And if I did not have the time yet to clarify and organize, I will do so in the evening. And then I just plan my next day where I take some things from my capturing list, other to-dos or things I did not get done today. And I'll also set three non-negotiables for the next day. I will also time block each thing I need to get done. This just helps me to get a better idea of how many things I can actually fit into my day and not overestimate the amount of to-dos. I am also reviewing my list and to-dos on a weekly basis. So this is the time when I will think about what have I missed this week and use this time to capture more things that come to my mind, which I either want to get done the next week or I will store this as something for later, as we already talked about. I will also have a look at my quarterly planning and if I'm still aligned with my goals and what I maybe need to adapt for the next week. And the last step is to engage and getting to work with confidence. Engaging with whatever you do with some level of trust that the thing you're doing is the right thing to do given you've got the whole inventory out in front of you as opposed to in your head which can't do that, it can't even start to do that. I mean, most people are spinning around and just basically doing latest and loudest stuff that's showing up in their head, not intuitive strategic decisions about, hey, I'm going to take a nap right now. Is that the thing to do? Yeah, I looked at everything else. It'll all wait. I'm going to take a nap because that's what I need to do to rest my brain, my body or whatever. And that's then the trusted choice. So anybody who's really implemented my methodology may look like everybody else. They're having a beer, they're taking a nap, they're doing email or whatever, but they're doing that from a conscious choice called that's the thing to do. So they have no ambient anxiety. And lastly, David has also shared some advice with me for people like me in their 20s. Relax, learn to ask yourself, what does my inner voice say I should or should not be doing right now? So pay attention to whether, the, whether you can access something that you would call an inner voice. It's hard to recognize that or pay attention to what that voice says, go do it and then see whether you got a positive result or a negative result. Be conscious about what you want and don't let other people's opinions about what you should want get in your way. I can just say for myself that this has definitely helped me to be more conscious of all the things I need to get done. And also it has helped me honestly to feel less stressed about everything I need to get done because I just know, hey, I will write everything down that comes to my mind. I will define a next action step. I know where everything is and that everything is in one place. And what's also really important for me is that I know I will review this and even right if like sometimes you maybe won't have the time to do it every night but then you'll do it the next night and you just know and you trust yourself that you are in a right place and actually working on the right things based off whatever it is that you're trying to do. Also a huge thank you again to David for coming on here and sharing all of his 
insights and advice with us. I'm really, really grateful for that. And lastly, of course, if you enjoyed this video, I'd be more than happy if you'd subscribe to my channel. And I also hope to see you very soon in one of my next videos. Thank you and goodbye.